websites, you've created a world for your characters to live and move around in, but let's be honest, a world by itself is pretty dull. It's time that we get a character in there and get that character moving around. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to actually get a player character sprite into your game. I've already got one that I've created in Photoshop, so I'm going to grab that sprite right out of my finder and just drag and drop him into my assets. Now hopefully you've been keeping all of your assets organized and you've got a nice folder set aside for sprites. Make sure to drag your sprite into that folder. From here we just want to make sure that our character is up and running so that he'll look good in our game. For example, if I dropped him in right now, you'll notice that he's really tiny and really blurry. A couple little things that we want to do here. First of all, if you click on your knight down in your sprite folder, you can update his pixels per unit to make sure that it matches the rendering that you created for your actual graphic. Mine is actually a 29 pixel sprite, so I'm going to click that. You'll notice that now when I hit apply, he gets much larger and fits my world a little better. Next up, I want to change the filter mode. Unity naturally uses a bilinear filter, which smooths out the edges between pixels. Normally we love that, but when we're doing pixel art, we want nice, sharp, crisp edges. We're going to pick point, no filter looking better. Sometimes there will also be some additional discoloration and if you change the format down here from automatic to RGBA 32-bit and hit apply it'll fix that problem. At this point your character will hopefully fit your world. You may need to change the size of your character just a little bit. You can do that by heading up to the transform component in your inspector. Here you don't need to do anything with his position or rotation but perhaps you want to change the scale just a little bit like making him taller. I change these to twos, he will become twice the height, and he's pretty monstrous just now. To be honest, I like mine set at one, though you might find that for your own liking, maybe 0.9 or 0.8 will get him working a little better. One last thing with this character before we get him moving, you may have noticed that when he stood next to my building, he actually disappeared behind it. That's a really easy fix. What we need to do to fix that is to go into the sprite renderer component, and look down here at the order in layer. You'll notice that my knight character is currently set to zero as his order, while my building is also set to zero. When that happens, we'll often run into problems because they're part of the same layer. And so I'm just going to move my character to one, which will move him forward one step so that he'll now render in front of the buildings. All right. At this point, we've got a character in there, but he's not doing anything. In fact, pressing play shows that my character is quite literally just floating in space. Now, in order to fix that problem, there's a couple little things that we're going to need to do. First off, we need to add some physics to our player. You may remember from past tutorials that this is done in Unity by using a rigid body. So I'm going to click on my knight, go to add component, and if you start typing in rigid body, you'll find it. Make sure to use the 2D version as we're dealing with a 2D game. Now your gravity will be working just fine, and you can see here that the gravity scale is 1, which means he'll be using real-world physics. If I were to play the game now, you'll notice that my character just fell right through the earth. That's because while in the last tutorial we added colliders to our environment, we haven't yet put one on our character. You can pick which type you like. If you start typing in collider, you'll get a number of options. Usually the two you want to go with here are either a box collider 2D, which will, as the name implies, create a box-like shape around the character. Or if you want something that's a little more character shaped, you could also work with a capsule collider 2D. Personally, I'm a fan of the capsule collider. You can click on the edit collider button in order to make sure that it fits your character a little better. I don't want my cape to be catching on things. Similarly, I don't want my character getting stuck because his hair is touching something. So I'm just going to edit the box just a little. Now when I press play, you'll see that gravity is functioning and my character is colliding with the ground. All right, so once you have set up your rigid body and collider, you're ready to start scripting in some movement. So let's create our first code. First thing you're going to want to do is head down to your assets and then get into your scripts folder. You can now right click, go up to create, and right near the top is C Sharp Script. We're going to call this one Player Movement. There's no space between the words, and I like to use capitals at the beginning of each word. 
This is going to be important because when you create the actual script, you need to make sure that the name inside the script is exactly identical to the one in Unity. Otherwise, you'll get annoying error messages. First thing we're going to do is underneath the class where we state the name of the script, you're going to hit enter. Notice that the curly bracket here and here mark all of the code that you're actually going to be running. And so all your coding needs to be within those two brackets. So just below that first bracket, we're going to declare a couple of variables. Remember a variable is just a container that holds information. And there's three of them that we're going to need for this script. The first one is a reference to your rigid body. Because we're trying to move the character, which implies physics, we're going to have to reference the rigid body because that's what handles all of our physics. First, we're going to create this one as a public variable. Public just means that we'll be able to see and modify it from within Unity. The type of variable is a rigid body 2D. You'll notice that we use a capital at the start. And then we can come up with a name for this variable. You could literally call this anything. It could be Bob. But let's pick one that will actually make sense. So we'll call this one player rigid body. Capitalization here actually doesn't make a difference to whether the code runs. But most coders will use lowercase on the first word and then uppercase at the start of each word that comes next. Now, we don't need to do anything in our start menu. In fact, we could actually delete it. Though if you're going to delete, make sure that you get exactly these two curly brackets going with it. Otherwise, your code could run into some trouble. Now that we've created this code, you can hit Command S to save. And then if you were to pop back over into Unity, we can grab our script, drag it up onto our player character, and you'll notice that it shows up over here in the inspector. There's now a box here for our rigid body. Because we made it public, it's showing up here in Unity. And it wants to know, well, what is the player rigid body? So we can grab the rigid body from our player, drag it into that box. Back in our code, we still have two more variables to do. The first one is also going to be public. This one is going to be the way we control our speed, how fast we want to move left or right. This one is going to be a float variable. A float is just a computer programming term for a variable that uses a decimal. And we'll call this one speed. Finally, we are going to add one more variable. This one we'll keep public for now. It's also going to be a float, and we'll call this one input. It's going to keep track of the x input, so whether we're going left or right. All right, at this point, we're ready to get this thing actually happening. So first off, you can go down into the update function. This one is called every frame during the game. And we are going to tell Unity what our input is going to be equal to. In this case, our input is going to be equal to a button press, so whether you're pushing left or right. The way we code that is we say, look for an input. And you're going to get the axis raw, which just means that if you push left on the key, it'll be negative 1. And if you push right, it will be 1. And it's going to look at the horizontal key. Now, Unity automatically is set up so that A and D, or the arrow keys, can move you left and right. But that can also be changed inside later on. Now, let's just take a quick look in Unity to see what this looks like. All right, so now when we run our game, over in the inspector, in our input key, you can see that when I push left, it changes to a negative 1. And when I write, push right, it turns to a 1. Next up, now that Unity knows whether we're trying to go left or right, we want to actually put in the code that makes us move. For this, we're going to create a new void called fixed update. Now, your program might add, automatically add the private, but we actually don't need that keyword here. Fix update works just like update, although the difference is that update is called every frame. And if you're using a high performance machine, you'll have much faster frame processing than on other computers. Also, frame rate varies as you play a game. So you might find that your player sometimes moves fast and sometimes slow if you put your code in the update function. Fixed update, however, is set to run at exactly 50 frames per second all the time. So putting your movement code in here will make sure that your player moves at a nice steady pace. All right, we just need one line of code, but it is a long one. Here we're going to take your player RB, our rigid body, and we're going to do something with its velocity. Keep in mind that velocity is just the speed and direction that you are moving. We want to set our player's velocity to be equal to a new vector2. Remember, vector2 is just an xy value, in this case a directional one. And that new vector2 vector will be our input, so either 1 or negative 1 
times our speed, the value we set up above. You can make it smaller or larger depending on how fast you want to move. And that'll get us our x value. Now the y value, we just want to be set to whatever the player's current RB um, rigid body is. That way, if you're falling, he'll continue to fall. And if you are staying still, he'll continue to stay still. All right, now that it's all coded, let's head back into Unity. So now there's just two final things we need to do, and then we'll have a working move script. The first one is over in our inspector in our player movement script. At the moment, you'll notice that our speed is set to zero, which means that when we try to run the game, anytime we move, it will be multiplied by zero, which means we'll be moving at zero. So let's put that up to 10 for now. The second thing we need to do is in our rigid body. You'll notice down here under collision detection that it's currently set to discrete. That means that Unity will periodically check to see whether you're bumping into things. The problem is if you're moving really fast, you might sometimes pass through walls. So we're just going to click on that and change it to continuous. This one will cost you in performance, but it's worth it in order to get your player character moving properly. Now when we get in the game, you'll notice that we are able to move back and forth nice and smooth. We've still got some work to do with flipping our character and adding jump and things, but we'll get that in a later tutorial. Now, I'll leave it up to you to try to do this for yourself. Yeah.